Yo, what's up everyone? Today I will show you step by step how you can make a TikTok edit that looks just like this. Hi, this is Paul. It's been called away to London for a few days. Meredith, I'll call you when I get back. Hasta la vista, baby. First of all, to start, you need After Effects, obviously. You need a sound that you like and the intro. I went out of my way and already searched both of them, so you don't have to wait. Let's get right into it. To start, you want to mute the intro. Then right click on your sound, go to keyframe assistant and convert audio into keyframes. That will just make it easier for you to see the beat drops and mark every time where the beat hits so you can change your clips. To see where your beat drops are located, click on the new created layer, press U on your keyboard, select both channels and open the graph editor. As you can see, every time there's a spike in the graph, you have a beat drop, so it's easier for you to mark them. Once you've opened the graph, just go ahead and mark every beat drop that you see after your intro starts. Just click it once and it will mark the current frame you're on so you can remember it easy where your beat drops are. Do that for every beat drop that you want to use in your edit. Once you've marked all the beats, you want to go ahead and listen to the audio for once so you can check if everything is on the right place. Sounds just fine for me, so now we're gonna go to the next step. Now for the next step, you can delete the layer that we created earlier because you don't need it anymore, you marked all your beats. And what you wanna do now is search your scenes that you can put on every beat drop. If you're looking for high quality scene packs, you can check out my Instagram. There's loads of scene packs in 4K quality and with all scenes from movies, shows, characters, and everything so make sure to check it out links in the bio for my edit i'm going to use a scene pack of patrick bateman which you can also find on my instagram account i'm just going to drag it onto the timeline and now double click it and now you want to go through the scene pack and search the clips that you like the most and that you want to use for your edit so now that you selected all your clips you can start with the next step. By the way, before we go into the next step, make sure you edit in 60 frames per second. Change your frame rate to 60 FPS. If you haven't done it already, that's how your edit are gonna look the smoothest. And if you wanna copy my composition settings, the width is 1170 and the height is 1560. That's what I use for my edits. So for the next step, first of all, we're gonna select all clips at once by pressing shift on our keyboard and again clicking and enable motion blur and frame blending. Now we can also mute the other clips because we don't want the sound from them over our music. Once you've done that, you wanna check every clip if it's centered. For example, this clip right here, I wanna move it a bit to the right so his face is in the whole shot visible. Now once all your clips are centered, you wanna go ahead and play the edit once to see if everything matches and if there's any that frames or anything in the clips that you selected. So just pre-render it and then look at it. So now once you've pre-rendered it all, just take a look at it. And as you can see in the clip I selected here, there's some glitches. That's due to the frame blending that we enabled earlier and because the lighting is changing pretty quickly. It's trying to adjust it to the frames so it makes it look like this and I don't want that in my edit. There's not really much that you can do about it except find another clip if you edit Star Wars and deal a lot with lightsabers, you're gonna face this problem as well. But for now, I'm just gonna select another part of the clip where the lighting doesn't change. So I don't have these glitches. Now what you wanna do is you're gonna right click on every clip, use pre-compose and then select the bottom option and enable this check mark too and press OK. Now you're gonna do that for every clip. When you're finished, your timeline should look something like this. And now we can add our Twixter. Twixter is basically a plugin that you're gonna have to install if you wanna have a smooth velocity. There's other ways to do it, but I recommend you to get Twixter. And I've already made a tutorial on smooth Twixter. If you want, you can check it in the top right corner. It's linked right there. And now I'm just gonna apply the preset that I made in another video earlier. So I have now put the preset on the first clip and you wanna go ahead and do that on every single clip. If you want access to my presets that I use to make my edits look the best possible, make sure to check out my pay app, the links in the description. Once you've applied all the Twixter, your edit should look something like this. Now we're gonna work on our intro. The intro is the most important part of the edit because that's 
what your viewers are gonna see first of the edit and it's gonna give a preview of the whole edit and the viewer is gonna decide whether he's gonna watch the edit or not. So I recommend you to put the most work into your intro to make it look the best as possible. We're gonna start by matching the audio levels. As you can see right now, the clip is pretty quiet and the music is pretty loud. We're gonna change that by going on our sound, clicking on the layer and pressing L on our keyboard. That should bring up your audio levels and I'm going to set a keyframe at the beginning of the sound, at the very beginning of the timeline and put it to negative, let's say, 16. Now we're going to go to the point where the beat drops and your edit starts and we're going to put it to zero. Now we want to select both the keyframes, easy ease them by right clicking keyframe assistant and easy ease. Open the graph editor, zoom in a bit so you can see it better. Now just copy my settings. Now you're going to click on your clip and put the audio levels up to let's say 10. Hi, this is now your audio levels should sound way more balanced. Let's give it a try. Hi, this is Paul. I've been called away to London for a few days. Meredith, I'll call you when I get back. Hasta la vista, baby. As you can see in the intro, you still have these glitches that I was talking about earlier, right here when the scene switches. What the hell? And to fix that, we're gonna zoom in a bit and go to the very beginning where you can see the glitch first happening, which is right here. Got one keyframe to the left and cut our clip by pressing Ctrl, Shift and D. Now for the duration of where the glitch is happening, we're gonna disable frame blending. So we're gonna go to the end where it ends again which is right here, cut the clip again, select the small bit that we just cut out and disable frame blending. Now you should see that it's fixed. So once you've done that, you're just gonna go ahead, select all the clips in your intro and pre-compose them so it's a bit more clean to work with. Now you wanna add your text. For doing that, you're gonna click on the top row and select the T for text. And I like to put my text all in caps to begin with. Now we're going to select it and click on the character. Every setting that you have under the character section is to change your text. Now the most important settings under here is one, this to change your text size, then this one to change the space between the letters and that's about it. That's all you need for now. So align your text to the middle, select all the text, make sure, open the character and I'm going to put it so that it looks good, just like this let's put it to eight to nine and then put the text size a bit down and also the height of the text like this exactly i'm going to show you what effects to put to make it look better what we're going to start with is by deep glow deep glow always looks the best as a glow for any text or anything in my opinion but when you edit first you're going to have this black bar in the background to remove that you're going to go here and check the box for required for text. Now it's gone. Next, you want to add a drop shadow. I will put the opacity to 100, distance to 8, and the softness to 4. Also, I will put the radius of the deep glow down to like 120. Next, I'm going to add some wave warp. Set the height to 8. Set the width to 1500 and put the wave speed to 0.4. Now duplicate the effect. So you have wave warp 2 by pressing Ctrl and D on your keyboard and set the direction from 90 to 0 on the second one that you just duplicated. Last but not least, I'm gonna add some panning so that it moves a bit and looks smoother. For that, search for S underscore shake, put it on your clip and now you're gonna put the amplitude to 0.12. I'm gonna put the frequency to 4. Now what we want to do is, because it's black, you want to put the aspect ratio to 0 0.99 and it should be fixed and now you can see everything. Now you want to subtitle every word that's said in the intro. So because now once I've done it, it still looks like I had a seizure while doing it. I'm going to show you how to fix it and make it aligned to the center and everything. What we want to do first is go to the parts where the text is more than just one line. For example, here we have three lines, so we're going to duplicate the text layer three times by, by pressing Ctrl D. 
So we have three layers now. So on the first layer, we're gonna delete the bottom two rows. On the second layer, we're gonna delete the top row and the bottom row. And on the bottom layer, we're gonna delete the top two rows, just like that, right? So we're gonna go to every single layer now and align it to the center. So now it should look like this and you have it aligned. Now we're gonna do that for the other layers too. Duplicate it once because we only have two rows. On the top layer, we're gonna delete the bottom row. And on the bottom layer, we're gonna delete the top row. Now we can align it and it should just look like that exactly. Same here, duplicate once. On the top layer, delete the bottom row. On the bottom layer, delete the top row and align both of them. So what I like to do now is give it some color. So I'm gonna go here and mark the keywords. For example, in this sentence, I'm just gonna mark Paul and put it to red. And also what you can do is put the font size for the word a bit up so it looks a bit fancier. Now we're gonna make the words fade up one by one so it looks smoother. To do that, we're gonna go to the first sentence, go to effects and presets and search up fade fade up words. You're just gonna put it on the clip. Now press U on your keyboard to open the keyframes. Now just play your edit and listen to when he finishes the sentence. Hi, this is Paul. So he finishes right here, so I'm gonna drag the keyframe to here. Now just do that for every single sentence. And now it should be fine. So you're gonna pre-compose again everything that you have. And if you have three layers for one text now, you're gonna pre-compose them all together. So we're gonna go ahead and pre-compose them to fit one clip. Now we're gonna make a fade out so when the text changes, it looks cleaner. We're gonna select our clip, press T on our keyboard. This should bring up the op opacity effect. We're gonna set a keyframe about, I don't know, let's say approximately 12, 12 frames from the end of the clip. And we're gonna go to the end of the clip and put it to zero. Now we're gonna copy this and apply it to the other text layers as well. Now you're done with your intro. The last thing you wanna do is add some final touches to your edit. First of all, I'm gonna pre-compose all the clips that we did earlier, just so it's a bit more clean to work with. Now we're gonna add three adjustment layers. You're gonna do that by pressing Control, Alt, and Y on your keyboard, or you can just go to Layer, New, and press Adjustment Layer. To the first one, we're gonna add a flicker. I'm gonna search S underscore flicker, edit. I'm gonna put a slightly smooth flicker because it fits the edit, so I'm gonna put the amplitude to 1.2. Not 1.2, I meant 0.12. Then put the frequency to 15 and put this to 0.2. Now we're gonna search for S underscore shake for panning. Add it on, our, on the bottom adjustment layer. Put the amplitude to 0.2. 0.21 put the frequency to 3.2 and now the final step which is the most important one which you shouldn't skip is add a coloring because because naturally your clips are gonna look pretty bad so what a coloring does is it helps you get good quality and make the clips seem more unique I would recommend you to buy my coloring right now on my website because it's the best coloring that you can get for any scenario for any scenes everything and just look at this enhancement of quality right here look at this this is perfection so if you want to go ahead and buy my coloring first link in the description you can get it okay jokes aside but yeah you're gonna add your coloring and now there's one last thing to do the last step is gonna be add a watermark. I have an in-depth tutorial on that as well. I'm gonna link it in the top right corner right now if you wanna watch that. Okay, now our edit is done. Okay, so once you've added your watermark as well, you're good to go. Just make sure to play your edit one more time to see if everything's how we expected it to be. Hi, this is Paul. It's been called away to London for a few days. Meredith, I'll call you when I get back. Hasta la vista, baby.
that it fits my expectations so yeah i like it i hope you like yours too and yeah well done you just made your first after effects edit on your own if you want more in-depth tutorials for after effects being an editor everything you're gonna find them on this account make sure to subscribe also check out my edits and yeah if you want any presets from me make sure to check out my pay hip thanks for watching see you next time